Hey everybody, welcome back. It is time once again for a Prepper Gearbox review and demonstration. We have an assortment of things for this month of April. I'm going to begin with the Tactical Molly Backpack. Obviously I'm going to begin with it because it's right here, because the ground is completely saturated, so I've got it hung up on this fence post, and I'm storing all the stuff in it. So, it is a durable, water-resistant nylon backpack. It has lots of mounting options on here. Uh, lots of molly webbing, and it appears pretty cool. Next up is the Tac Force tactical knife. That is this right here. Has a pocket clip on the side. Spring-assisted opening. A half-serrated edge. It has a bottle opener. And that little thing right there on the end is a glass breaker slash screwdriver. So it looks like this will be pretty effective. The Maxpedition Tactical Field Deck of Playing Cards. It is a deck of playing cards that is tactical because it's made by Maxpedition. They are made out of PVC, so they are water resistant. Next up, the Grimlock style D-ring clips. These got popular after I was out of the military, but these attach to Molly webbing. You have a plunger button here and it opens up your D-ring, and you can close it back the same way. These were originally used to mount things on ballistic vests that have molly webbing on it, uh, because you don't want anything with shoulder straps, because it tends to cut off your circulation. Uh, so that is a handy option to mount things like water bladders and packs and things like that to the back of your ballistic vest. Next up, the UST Micro Spark Wheel. Now these have been around for a long time. The military has used these in survival kits in the past. For all I know, they might still use them. And they have a couple advantages. One, as you can see, they're very small, very lightweight, and they can be used one-handed. But I'll be honest with you, I haven't used one before, so we're going to learn about these together. <laughs> and last but not least, we have the skill card shelter building basics. So we're going to build a shelter and it says here, P.S. Send us a picture of a shelter you build and we'll add something extra to your next box. So, challenge accepted because we like free stuff. <laughs> Alright guys, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and begin. Alright, some of you guys might know that I like to put my larger tools and knives on my pack. It keeps it off my belt and it's uh, just a lot more comfortable. So, as you see here, I've got my tomahawk on the side of the pouch. You have some molly webbing here, and then you've got this larger loop behind it. So something like a tomahawk fits in there perfectly, and it holds it very securely. Same thing with my knife. Also, you can mount any type of molly adaptable pouch to this. I like to have a smaller pouch like this on the outside of my pack to put things like my compass, extra batteries for the camera, things like that. So, as far as the actual pack itself, it feels pretty comfortable. The straps are okay. It has a sternum strap on it. It's actually in the correct position. And it has a waist belt on it too. Uh, but it doesn't actually go around your waist. You might see it kind of goes around the bottom of your ribs. Uh, the only function of that is going to be to keep the pack from flopping around too much on you if you're running. I don't foresee myself running through the woods today. <laughs> but anyways, here it is. Looks good to me. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. Alright guys, the next thing I'm going to talk about are these Grimlock style locking D-rings. I'm going to open that up and you see there's a slot right here and that is where your molly webbing is going to go and you see there's a little break right here that is how you're going to slide the molly webbing down in there. So. Loop it through like that. Find where that slot is. See if I can get it here. 
and feed that up through like so. Keep pushing it through until the top of the webbing gets down in that slot, just like that. All right, now you have a locking D-ring. So, cool. So if you need to mount some gloves or something like that there, just to keep them handy, put your compass or something on there, uh, it makes a nice spot for that. All right, next up that I'm going to try is the UST Spark Wheel Fire Starter. This thing right here. And to open the package, I'm going to use our cool tactical knife. So small, it's kind of hard to hold on to. Right. Not sure if you can see that. It has a tiny arrow facing this way. So I'm assuming that's the way this goes. So we're going to turn it that way. Yep, it sparks. And it does work one handed. All right, now to change out the flints, I'm assuming this is the same way that a Zippo lighter works with a small screw on the end there. And it just so happens we have a small screwdriver on the end of this knife, so see how well that works. And there should be a little spring inside of here with a tiny flint on the top of it. Yep, there's our spring. And we have little flint things here, which are really, really difficult for you to see on the camera. <laughs> and there's this little copper looking piece here that I'm assuming is just a plunger that goes on the end of the spring, just like that. All right, so the spring keeps tension on the flint. All right, so cool. And we already found a use for the screwdriver. All right, let's see what is in this little capsule. All right. It appears like it would be waterproof. We have three extra flints and looks like instructions. Hmm. This may be difficult to get out. There we go. Put those back in here. Pretty much everything I just said. <laughs> All right, so neat little item here. I wonder. Hey, it fits down in there. Cool. And you could probably put a little bit of tinder in there as well. Now, I didn't bring any tinder with me, uh, so I'm gonna have to look around and see if I can't find anything. <laughs> Stay tuned. Alright guys, here is some tinder. This is Vaseline on a cotton ball. And I'm going to try to do this one-handed. Okay. Alright. Nice! It works! 
One-handed, I gotta say, it's a little bit awkward because there's just not a whole lot there to hold on to. But, as you see, it does work. Nice. And again, the whole thing fits in a little tiny tube here. So, there you go. Nice little addition to a mini kit. Alright. So I'm testing out the Maxpedition tactical playing cards. I have removed the jokers. And I don't know of a great way to test these out other than just playing cards on the wet ground. Uh, Shuffle them up good. If I had some other people out here, we could play poker, but I don't, so it's going to have to be solitaire. Now, the cards themselves feel pretty good. Uh, they feel high quality. They don't seem like they're going to take forever to break in. I'm not going to make you guys watch this whole game. But uh, I will give you some advice in case you haven't heard this before. If anybody ever asks you to play 52 card pickup, don't do it because they're just going to do this. Now you get to pick them up. <laughs> All right. So uh, my review will be uh, in direct proportion to how well I do at Solitaire. really difficult to do <laughs> on leaves. Alright, I lost two games in a row, so the cards suck. <laughs> Let's try using this knife a little bit. The blade has good geometry. It doesn't feel real great in the hand. It came with sort of a uh, utility edge on it. It seems to be cutting just fine. I imagine the serrations would help if you were cutting through heavy rope. But even carving on this piece of wood it seems to be doing real well. Looks good to me. <laughs> Alright guys, some of you guys might remember this. This is a lean-to shelter that we made in a previous video. I'll put the, uh, the title of the video right here in case you want to search for it and see how we actually built this. Uh, but I posted that video on February 2nd. 
And that means that, that I actually made the shelter on February 1st. And that's almost three months ago. So it's actually held up really well for not being maintained for any of that time. Uh, but what we're going to do is actually use our skill card and use some of the principles that they talk about there. We're going to tear this down and use this as building materials for a brand new shelter that should actually work. Uh, but let me take you guys around here to show you this. This is just a standard lean-to. You might be able to see that we've got a really sharp roof angle there. Now it's got to be that steep of an angle to shed the water off effectively. And here on the back we've got our leaf litter. Now some of this is caved in. It used to go all the way up to the top. And our ridge pole here, as you see, is bowed out a lot from the weight of all that. But uh, let's tear this thing down and see if we can't make something new out of it. Okay, so we got this tree limb. It's part of a fallen tree here. As you see, it's not very stable. But I think it's got decent enough structural integrity to it that this is going to work as our ridge pole here. Now to stabilize it on the outside we're just going to make a little tripod right here to give it some support. And I think that's going to do real well for us. Okay, I've used some paracord here that I salvaged from the lean-to and we have made sort of a bipod here. So now that is pretty structurally sound. The other end is attached over here to the tree. And the next thing I'm going to do is kick out all these leaves from under where the shelter is actually going to be at. Because uh, there's no telling what's living down in there. You don't want to make your shelter on top of a big old copperhead or anthill or anything like that. So let's get this all cleaned out. Alright, this is looking pretty good. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, before you really start building your shelter, take a look up. Make sure there's no big dead limbs up there. Remember, trees fall for a reason and sometimes there's more than one. You want to make sure you don't have any widow makers that's going to fall on you in the night. But we're good over here. Alright guys, as you can see we got the basic frame of the structure up now. We've got all these sticks here that's going to act as our uh, main support. Uh, the next thing that we got to do is fill in some of the gaps with some smaller twigs and add in all this leaf litter. We're going to compress it on the back side of the shelter and that's going to help with the water resistance uh, to help give this a structure to shed water off to the ground before it can actually drip through to get on us. Alright guys, our shelter is complete. We have our leaf litter added onto the back of it. You see we're in a nice thick spot here that's really going to protect us from the wind. Here's what we got protecting our back. And we also have these trees here that have a fairly thick canopy. It's going to protect us from some of the rain, too. So there it is. Here's the inside of it. So it looks pretty good to me. Alright, now for the big test. Yep, it fits. <laughs> I would say this is a success. It's nice and comfortable, it's just big enough. It's perfect for a survival shelter. Uh, we got good protection from the wind, decent protection from the rain. 
And uh, you know, if I was gonna stay in here overnight, if I thought there was more of a chance of rain, I would probably cut some some of these uh, green branches around here. It's got a lot of leaves on them and kind of weave those in on the back. Uh, that's gonna be a little bit better waterproofing than the, the leaf debris that we have on here now. Uh, but for a demonstration, I'm not gonna go around cutting a whole bunch of live trees. Plus, this is gonna work just fine as it is. So anyways, guys, that is our survival shelter. All right, guys, it is now time for the final review. And I gotta wrap this up because I'm on my backup camera now. The other one, the battery died on it. All right, so the Tactical Molly backpack. I like it a lot. It's got all the mounting options that I normally look for. It's just the perfect size for a day pack. Only one small criticism. Uh, it's loud. <laughs> the reason why it's loud is because of these oversized zippers. Uh, but that's good if it's cold out because then you can grab onto it easier. Uh, but again, that is a very minor criticism. I got to give it a solid thumbs up. Next up, the Tech Force Tactical Knife. This feels like it's a very solid knife. It's heavy weight. The screwdriver on the end works good with the UST spark wheel. So again, thumbs up. Uh, my Expedition Tactical Field Deck playing cards suck because I can't win a game of solitaire. <laughs> uh, no, for real, these are very high quality cards. Probably the best deck of cards that I've got. And that is the type of quality that you would probably expect from Maxpedition. <laughs> um, so again, solid thumbs up. Grimlock style D-ring clips. These feel fairly rugged. They give you two of these. I've got one mounted on the pack right now. Not a whole lot to say about them other than they look good to me. Thumbs up. UST Micro Spark Wheel. Here we go. The only small criticism I have is that it's just a little bit too small to grab onto with your hand if you're going to do that uh, one-handed. But the size is actually kind of part of its strength, right? That it's small and lightweight. So, got to give it a thumbs up. It did work very well. And finally, the shelter building basics. We got our basic shelter built. <laughs> They do give you some good tips on here. So anyways, that has been my time for the day. It was a great box this month. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, thumbs up.